Hey guys, welcome back to Skylanders Ring of Heroes. Now in today's video, we're gonna be looking at Snapshot. Now he's another one of the one star units that I found really, really helpful early game. Um, I'll get into straight away the necessity of building him. Um, Cause one of my friends actually asked me, he's like, is he necessary to build for progression? And I'd say probably the least necessary for progression so far. But when you come up to something like um, uh, Beast 9, which is fire, I feel like you're really going to need some water units or tech units to help you through that. And the other thing is, because um, tower, the Mirage Tower, I don't see as necessary content, um, he's super helpful for that. So if you really want to push the tower, I found him so useful for reducing endurance on bosses and stuff like that and getting those knockdowns, which are also really important, not just for damage and stuff like that, but for damage mitigation, giving you time to recuperate and all that sort of stuff. Him in my second team, when he was like four star on really average runes, was still putting in lots of work. And the reason is because of his skill set. And we'll look at that now. So his first skill is the one that awakens. Um, we can have a look at the, the difference. So. It fires arrows at two enemies, decreases the target's endurance. So he's basically here for the endurance reduction. He does good damage too, but I feel like you could also build him on a tank build where it's like um, you do crit rate on slot two and then go for HP and defense on the other two slots and just build him tanky and use him purely as a, as a high HP, high defense control unit, even though his base HP and defense aren't that high. Um, you'd be aiming for flat stats on those, but that might be something later when they introduce the hard mode of Mirage Tower. He could come in very useful for something like that. Um, but yeah, we'll get into the, the skill set. Um, the first skill fires the arrows at two enemies, decreasing the target's endurance, inflicts a bonus attack on all enemies that decreases endurance when landing as a critical hit. Now, the way this works is it's worded a bit, um, not confusing, but it's just a bit long-winded. So he fires two arrows. Both of those reduce the endurance of each enemy um, by four. So you've got, you've got two enemies that always already reduce their endurance by four. Each of those arrows has a separate crit chance. So you only need one of those arrows to crit to proc the AOE, which means you've whatever your crit chance is, you've actually got a higher chance than that specific crit chance to proc the AOE because only one of the arrows has to crit. So when that um, AOE procs, it reduces the endurance of all enemies by two. So you've got two enemies that have already been reduced by six and then the rest of them reduced by two. And then his second skill synergizes so well, it's only a two mana cost on an 18 second cooldown, longest sort of cooldown, but the two mana cost is nice. And it basically, um, it fires an arrow, the greater his health, the greater the output damage. I believe that's based on um, his health. I haven't actually tested this too much, don't quote me on that. But anyway, it's it does damage and reduces the endurance by four again. So basically with him, it's, it's actually crazy how much he does. So... If you do cycle through first attack into second attack, you'll end up with two and, and you get a crit on that first one. You'll get two um, one enemy that's going to be negative uh, 10 by the end of the two attacks, one enemy that's negative six, and the others will be negative two. Um, the negative 10 comes from, obviously, the four and the two from the first attack, and then uh, the extra four from the second attack. So it's massive massive reduction and in pvp as well this is very handy the problem is the cooldowns are a bit long so you're not guaranteed to get in before your enemies with this but if you do get him cycling through his skills in pvp get him to survive um, maybe take him against something that you've got tanks for their damage dealers so um something that's, uh, that's neutral to the damage dealer and then have him positive so bring him against fire or magic damage dealers um, there's a lot of kaboom out there you can bring him against that have a neutral kaboom tank and then uh, once he starts going, he just cycles through and things get knocked down so quick just because a lot of um, units, a lot of attackers and stuff like that, um, even the the supports have, I think tanks have more endurance, but the, the attackers and supports often have nine endurance. So with his two skill um, rinse through, he's going to be knocking down an opponent with those two skills and reducing the others. And then obviously you've only got three opponents, so two of them will be at negative six. By the time he gets through his first skill a second time, you've already knocked down another opponent 
it's just it's crazy control um, when you get it to work. Obviously, you need to build tanks and stuff for Team Synergy and Arena, but you can see where even with quest progression, um, the same thing applies. Where um, I used him a lot in early in the quest progression because it helped me get through bosses and stuff. Like I'd use something like Hot Dog, him, and Stealth Elf. Um, you lose the Enigma support, but you're gaining so much control from that um, the knockdown potential of him. So. That's the basic reason you use him, is for the knockdowns. Um, the knockdowns, he does actually decent damage. It's not crazy. Okay, so I was just editing and I realized I didn't even talk about his third skill. So his third skill, probably because I don't really use it in the set that I'm using at the moment. Um, it could probably be viable if you build him like real good damage in arena because it's got that eight second cooldown. You'll undercut some enemies, but at the moment, early game with stealth elves around and stuff, I just don't think it'd be best option to go for that him as your first nuker but um it summons a water pillar engulf an enemy cast accuracy down for one turn and decreases skill cool time by two seconds if the enemy gets knocked down now it sounds like it would synergize well with the whole you get the extra skill cooldown if you knock down an enemy but the problem is this skill only reduces endurance by two whereas these other ones do it by uh four and it's a five mana cost which is really expensive so once I, once we get on endgame runes and we can test him properly, you know, it might be a real viable option as a quick low cooldown uh, nuke, but, and obviously skills up to mana consumption minus one, but for the time being, I don't see it as being um, the best suited for his kit in the current state. Uh, mine's isn't on the best runes. Uh, the way I'd rune him is the crit rate, uh, crit damage and defense HP. Mine's is on defense percent. He really wants flat defense, but it was the best I had in a uh, in a strike rune. So that's what he got. Um, the dodge, he's just on dodge because that's what I had the crit rate and crit damage for. Um, obviously, aim for as high a crit as possible. You want that hundred. Mine's is eighty three, which is plenty good enough. I've seen one or two um, times he didn't proc the AOE. It's very rare at that eighty three percent crit rate. Crit damage, obviously aim for a bit of attack and then your tank stats. My runes aren't the greatest, um, just a lot of five stars on him, just sort of what I had left, because I am getting to the stage now where I do have a lot of six star runes, but they're on my other units and that set works well. I like the strike set on him just to get that a bit more attack and then um, the dodge set actually works fairly well. You do get the odd glance and stuff like that, um, especially when he's got elemental advantage really helps helps out on the, the dodge. Um, as for powering up, mine's is, I've, I've got the shards to power him up to four. I just got to, you know, do some more farming. But this is a general tip with all the one stars and even two stars to an extent. I only um, power them up and evolve them to six star and awaken them and then stop farming their shards because I did the same with my hot dog, my blades, my everything. And you can see my hot dog, I've already just through wish stone summons and all that sort of stuff, got 310 of him left. Blades has got enough. Um, she's getting up there as well. She's almost maxed out. She's at plus four. So that's that's the big tip in um, these one star and to an extent two star units. I've stop, stopped farming Kaboom um, for the same sort of strategy is that you get a lot through those summons. So you don't really need to farm them over that stage. I feel like once you've got them to six star, then you can start leveling them. And that's the most important thing. And then the, the, uh, the power ups will come as you go. But we'll jump into um, into some battles and just have a look at him. Um, like I said, he was really good in Mirage Tower, and he was actually one of the main reasons, him and Kaboom were the main reasons I was able to actually clear the whole Mirage Tower last month. I know I made a video and said I didn't think I was going to do it. I actually managed to clear it on the last day of the um, that, that it was out, and I'll just go in here. I've got the, I was going to do this in a later video, but I really need the gold at the moment, so apparently this has got gold, so we'll just exchange this and see what's in it. Um, this is for the level 60 clear. So you get 3,000 wish stones. I'm loving the wish stones. I like the summons. 150,000 gold, which is spot on. Uh, upgrade stone, which th I feel like those are going to be really, really valuable. And then a red potion, which the potions make no sense to me at the moment just because the gold cost for using them isn't worth it. I just sell all mine. But um, yeah, that's not bad. 150,000 gold, that's going to help me a lot. But yeah, we'll go into we'll go into an arena and I'll see if I can get... Uh, an enemy team where I can really show um, the potential of what he does. So I'm looking for something with a fire. Okay, all the earth there isn't good for him. I'm looking for something with like a Kaboom as the damage dealer. Um, Stealth Elf isn't going to work. Uh, that's the problem at the moment for early game with him is that 
a lot of people do just still have the Stealth Elf as the damage dealer, which is strong against him, which makes it a bit tougher to use, but we'll, we'll find one here. All right, um, all right, I'll take this team, and what I'll do is I'll try and uh, nuke the Stealth Elf first with the uh, Tough Luck, and then I'll just hold out the rest of my attacks and try and let him just steal the show and do the, the knockdowns because um, we just want to get into a fight anyway. So let's do this. I'll, I'll, hopefully I can, if I don't knock out the uh, Stealth Elf, we'll be in trouble, but we'll see how we go. Normally I would knock out the other girl first, but we'll see what happens. Stealth Elf, let's do that. Oh no, we didn't get the crit. Okay, <laughs> that's where he's bad against Stealth Elf. Uh, we'll, we'll work through this one and then we'll, uh, we'll we'll get into another one. Okay, I'm gonna have to find a Kaboom Damage Dealer team. I think it's the only way it's really gonna work for me. And I'm gonna end up losing this fight. Yeah, like I said, normally on that fight, you'd go you'd attack the Ember first because she is the bigger threat than the um, the Stealth Elf. But you know, we, we, the decisions were made, mistakes were made, and uh, we we live with that. So. We might still actually get it because we'll get the heal there and we should be good with the hot dog. My hot dog is now on an attack build. Um, so he does decent damage in these types of situations as well, as you can see. So and that was failed attempt number one to show off the snapshot. So we'll go back to the dual lobby, see if we can find something better to actually test him against. We might just roll through some, some gears here anyway. It's never a bad thing. Um, let's see. Okay, this one, once again, Stealth Elf. And we'll cut back as soon as I find something that's not a Stealth Elf or a Tough Luck. Okay, so I found another team that also had a Tough Luck, tried to kill the Tough Luck. That didn't work. She just killed him straight away. So until you start finding teams that have fire attackers and non-life slash earth attackers, he's not that great in Arena. But he, trust me, he does do good things. But I just want to demonstrate the control that he has. So we're going to jump into here, which is the Shadowy Bandit. We're on normal mode, so it's actually fairly difficult. I probably will fail this anyway. But I just wanted to show you just basically how much control he can get. So we'll jump into it. We'll get through the waves, we'll get to the boss, and I'll show you how quickly he can knock things down. So we're going to start off using his skills just to demonstrate what we're actually going to get here. So doing decent damage, Hydro Arrow, and straight into a kill, which would have been one, one off of a knockdown because these guys have a bit more endurance. They start with 11 endurance. But then we go into again. You can see that would have been another knockdown. Then this guy's at three. His second skill would knock him down as well. But we'll get into the boss and just sort of try and get some knockdowns happening. Um, get some attack up and I'll just try I'll try and just use him to get this through like I don't think we'll get there but hopefully he doesn't kill him beautiful so you can see he's at nine now he's down to three now we attack again and he's knocked down already so that's just from using him and then you can get your other units to do the damage but you can see how once he's tanky enough to survive that especially in something like this the knockdown potential is huge so that boss went from 19 um, endurance down to zero pretty much from only snapshot attacking which is actually crazy um, crazy value for control because like I said it does also um, give you damage mitigation when the boss is down lets you get more damage in recover all that sort of thing so it's just actually a really handy thing for this um, it's, it's hard to demonstrate him on a pre-recorded like on a setup recorded video but you can see that the knockdown is crazy. Like I, I just noticed that straight away, as soon as I built him, when I started doing just general content, that I was knocking things down so much. And he did just the control, even in the waves, because you'll get to stages, um, even when you're doing, say, uh, dungeon runs and stuff like that, where when I'm looking at B9 at the moment, I haven't actually cleared B9. I've been trying. I'm working on Wham Shell to get there. But you, you'll just get to stages where the extra units that he's not actually attacking will start to um, be knocked down just through the, the middle stages of it. Um, once again, it's hard to describe, but he does do a hell of a lot of work in the knockdown department, reducing endurance, and that's pretty much the role for him. Good damage too, but you could also build him on that tanky build. So that's pretty much it for Snapshot. Uh, sorry the demonstrations weren't the greatest demonstrations you've ever seen, but I really do recommend him. He is another one of those one stars. You might look at him now and see that you've, if you've been playing from the start, you might have like 300 of his um, shards and you can already start building them. The one stars are fantastic for that because they're so easy to build. But that's Snapshot. Once again, thanks for watching another video, guys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.